let's talk about opening up your bar. So you get this job at uh, uh, this place bartending. They open up at 11 o'clock. Uh, you're the key holder now. You get up there and get things started. You're opening up the bar. Congratulations. Okay, so what do you do? Well, you have the key. You should open up the bar at 11. What time should you be there? I would be there by 10 o'clock. All right. You get there by 10 o'clock. You walk in. The first thing you should do, turn on the lights. Yes, I've actually walked into a bar and uh, used to be my competition at one point. Uh, walked in there. There's a bartender there. They have the lights shut down and I don't understand. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? What's, what's up with the lights? Can I get a drink first of all? But after that, can I, what's going on with the lights? She says, um, I'm new here. Um, don't know where the light switches are. You may want to know that when you walk in. So turn the light on. Second thing, uh, check the ice machine. Yeah, ice machine, why? Because the ice machine is God in a bar. Because if there's no ice, there's no cocktails. Nobody wants to drink their uh, drinks warm. And if you don't have ice and your refrigerator doesn't work either, you can't even keep the beers cold. So uh, ice is very important. Check the ice machine. If it doesn't work, call the manager, call the owner. Figure it out. Go to the store and grab ice because you will not be able to make a drink without ice. Okay? So, second thing is ice. The third thing, turn on the neon lights at the window. Most bartenders that I have always forget the neon lights at the window. So, why is that so important? Listen, when I'm down driving down the street and... Uh, I'm thirsty. It's a hot summer day. I'm looking for that Budweiser sign. Maybe I can drop in and have a beer or something. So turn those neon lights on as well as neon lights underneath the bar. You might have those. Uh, just turn them on. They'll, they'll help. They'll draw more customers in. Okay. So turn on the lights. After you have turned on the lights, what you want to do is put some entertainment in this place. Okay. Because if people start walking in here and I'm not set up, like I still have to do other stuff and I can't entertain you. At least I, there, the TV is there and you can entertain yourself for a little while while I'm busy and have short talk with you. So uh, check the entertainment. Now check the temperature. Why did I say don't, uh, or shouldn't temperature be a little more important? Not really, because if it's cold in the place, they can still uh, have a couple of drinks and warm up with the entertainment if they really want to hang out with me. Uh, but yes, definitely check the temperature. If it's cold, put the heat on. If it's hot, put the AC on. Make sure it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable, the guest won't stay. Okay? So make sure the place is comfortable. Now, uh, I have that all said, done. What do you want to do next? Let's start cutting garnishes. Uh, the garnishes that we're going to need later on. The lemons, the limes, the oranges. Do a little twist. Uh, if you want to learn how to uh, cut garnishes, and do some cool tricks with it, check out our mixology class. Um, it has all the little tricks to do stuff in there with drinks and mixers. But uh, coming back to it, cut your garnishes up, get them ready, uh, check your juices, make sure your juices are filled and you have backup juices available when you need them. You check your liquor, you make sure all the liquor stock inventory is filled up. If you need it, go to the liquor room and get it. Uh, you know, your job, your night bartender's job should be to give you a list. Sometimes they don't do their job, so it falls on you. So you should be prepared. Make sure you have all the alcohol. For example, uh, I'm working one time. It's someone's birthday. They come in and uh, everyone's drinking uh, shots of Hennessy. All of a sudden, I'm low, low on my bottle. And if I don't have a backup, I'm screwed because... Once they're drinking a certain drink, they're not going to switch. Uh, so they will switch your bar, not the drink. So make sure you're stocked up well. Once the liquor is all stocked up, this is something I used to do personally. I used to have little snacks at the bar, pretzels or uh, little chips. Uh, why? Because if I can have my guest munching away at something, especially put a little extra salt on it, uh, they'll eat more and they will keep on ordering another beer. Uh, so, you know, you might have just sold two extra beers because of that quarter bag of chips, uh, you know. So that definitely helps. This is the way we're going to set up in class. So we're going to have our spill mat here. We're going to have our napkin caddy on one side. Our garnish tray. 
on one side and have it ready open. So this is us all set up for class. In real life, you will be cutting these. Get our juices all set up. So we're going to fill these juices up the way we're all supposed to. And we're going to get it from the stations that where we store our juice, colored water juices. Okay. So... When you are in class, you're going to do the same thing and check your inventory. If the bottle needs to be filled, you go and fill up a bottle. Uh, there will be uh, instructors will give you the instructions on how to fill. So before you get started in your bar, this is you checking inventory, uh, filling up your juices, wiping down your area. Okay, making sure everything is nice and neat. Getting your tools together. You should have your mixing set. You should have... Uh, for class, you would need a tall shaker, short shaker, mixing glass, a bar spoon, a strainer. We're not going to need the muddle for class, so no muddler for now, but you would also have a muddler in here. Uh, you would have this ready in your front of your station, okay? Uh, so garnish tray, napkin caddy, mixing set, juice containers, checking the liquor is filled, and then uh, you can... You will have your manual with you. By the time all the students arrive, you can start practicing by getting some ice, uh, asking your instructors the further instructions they need to have. Uh, you need to have in order to start. But uh, once you get into the, uh, the school, your job is to train as much as you can and get down to these drinks and get your practice on. So this is how uh, opening the bar should go in real life, like I explained, and uh, you're in class training. So now let's talk about closing your bar. Now let's say you were closing your bar. Um, here's what you should do when you're closing the bar. First of all, uh, in New Jersey, you can keep your bar open till two in the morning. Some might have a special permission on certain nights to open up to three, but maximum three. I don't see anyone more than three. Uh, New York usually closes at four p.m. Uh, a.m. So uh, for that reason, you if you're in New Jersey, you're calling a last call at 1.45 a.m. So it gives people 15 minutes to finish their drinks. Once you have called the last call, you should not serve drinks after that, okay? Once you cut it off. Because if you do it for one customer, then you have to do it for a lot of other customers. So stick to your word. After you've done last call, you have to wipe down each and every bottle on your speed rack. The most dirtiest area in your bar after you've done bartending is wiping down the bar. Okay, so wipe down the bar, pull your bottles up, wipe them one at a time, put them all, pull them all up, wipe them one at a time, and then clean that speed rack up. If you do not clean your speed rack and you do not do a good thorough cleanup, you will get fruit flies in your bar. And once you get fruit flies, the flies will go inside, inside the bottle and you'll be serving drinks, alcohol with flies in them. Uh, should, would not look really good. Uh, so make sure you clean your area and make sure you keep the bar neat. Uh, you would wipe down your countertop. You will make sure all the glassware is washed. Uh, look, we might not have a bar back. So if you don't have a bar back, it's your responsibility. Make sure you find out what's your responsibility when you're working. Uh, wash down your glasses, uh, write down an inventory list for the next bartender, okay? Put the garnishes away in the refrigerator, okay? Do not leave them out after your shift unless someone's coming and using them. But if you're closing up and the place is shutting down, put your uh, garnish tray in the refrigerator. If you have beer taps, you should throw hot water in the beer tap so all that, rinse it out with rice, hot water, so all that gunk that went down there just goes down and there's no beer floating up there. Okay, put hot water down the beer taps, put hot water in your sinks, uh, make sure you rinse out and wipe down each and everything thoroughly. Um, you should also count your register. Here's one thing I forgot to mention in the opening the bar. In opening the bar, you should count your register. Make sure it says zero sales before you start for your shift. Uh, make sure you count the bank. The bank is the money that was given to you when you start. For example, $200 in fives and singles. So this way you have change money. If you made $1,000 in sales, you should have $1,200 in there because your bank was 200 
Okay, so these are some of the little things that you should always have ready to go. Um, and then you're closing the bar, make sure each dollar adds up because if it doesn't add up, you are responsible as a bartender. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in this industry uh, and there's a lot of drinks being involved in it. So uh, make, you want to make sure everything is clear cut. So uh, take the garbage out. Make sure you take each and every garbage out. Do not leave any garbage in because there's going to anything that would create flies. You don't want to keep inside. Get everything out and wipe down everything nicely. Uh, as a bar owner, I'm paying my bartenders to be there. So I would I have a suggestion for all the newbies that are going into the bar industry and want to impress their bosses. Uh, have a rag in your hand when you're not busy and always clean something or wipe down something. Because if I'm looking at you and or the owners are looking at you, they definitely are through cameras or whatever to see what kind of job you're doing. They're like, oh, look at this, you know, very good employee over here. This bartender cleans up while he's not busy. So it just makes your value a little bit more than the other bartender that just comes there to the party, make their money and be out. Uh, put a little more effort into it. Love the place a little bit more. They'll love you and you'll see it in, in, uh, when you're bartending. Uh, so closing the bar, um, that's pretty much what I would, uh, I would tell you. Uh, make a list of inventory for juices that need to be brought up or g got out what you ran out of. Uh, definitely communicate all of these things with uh, the manager or the owner. What is your responsibility on opening? What is your responsibility in closing? Um, that is pretty much it. Now I will be seeing you into the next lesson. Thank you.